Hello, first grade sea turtles. Guess what we're going to be doing today for our art project? We are going to be drawing a sea turtle with all its texture and a nice surrounding underwater scene to go with it. So this video has two parts. Part one is in the beginning and you will watch that first and draw the sea turtle with the land and then stop when you get to the end of part one. It'll say so right in the video. Come back next week and you can finish with part two, outlining and coloring. It takes a long time to draw a picture well and to outline it and to color it. And there's no way I expect you to do all of that in one art period. Our art classes usually took two or three periods sometimes to finish a particular project. So take your time and don't rush. You can show it to me when you're all finished with part two. I can't wait to see your sea turtles. I bet they're gonna be awesome. Have fun. Today's lesson has three learning goals. I can use lines in my drawings. I can use movement in my drawings. And I can use texture in my drawings. Let's talk about texture. We're gonna be drawing a sea turtle today and they are full of texture. Texture is the word that means how something feels. So to show texture in a drawing, we need to repeat lines and shapes, usually small lines and small shapes repeated very close together will create a texture. In this case, it's going to be a scaly texture. This is a photo of a sea turtle, and this is a piece of art of the same sea turtle. Notice how the artists can be very creative with the colors that they use and the backgrounds. This picture is showing movement. They used lines and repeated them to show that the water was moving and flowing. We're going to be using some of these pictures I've been showing you to get ideas for our scene. Our seaweed, the coral, the other fish in the background, the sea turtle and the land. Let's start with the drawing of the sea turtle. The first thing I'm gonna do is look at this particular one and see if I can draw the same shape for the shell and the arms and the legs. So basically you're gonna draw an egg on your paper. From the wide end of the egg, we'll make a neck and a head. My little turtle has sort of like a, a beak there for its mouth. And then the shell had a ring around the edge. I'm gonna to try to repeat that for my drawing. Inside that ring, I'm gonna draw lines that repeat all the way around the edge. You may notice that the front two flippers are much longer than the back, and they curve away from the head towards the back end. Take a look at the texture. I'm gonna to try to do that next. By repeating small circles over and over, I can create the feeling of scales inside the flippers. So I'm gonna fill the entire flipper area with small circles, leaving little spaces between them. You are gonna be going over this later with a black marker, so you don't wanna make those too tiny or the entire flipper will end up looking black when you outline it. Don't forget to include the same scaly texture in the back flippers. Next, I'm going to fill the center of the shell with a series of curved lines, almost like hills going around the edge of the oval. In the center, I'll just add two more curved lines and voila, it's done. I think I should have a few scales on the neck also, so it matches the flippers. Now it's our turn to try to create movement in our picture, and we're gonna use lines to make it look like the sea turtle is swimming quickly through the water, creating some motion behind him. Try that on your paper now. It's time to create some land or rocks or plants and coral into our scene. So let's draw now on our paper underneath the sea turtle, a bumpy line to be like a hill, underwater hill, with another one behind it, and perhaps a third behind that. 
Now we're creating some distance. Now let's go back and look at some of the previous pictures. Check out the seaweed on this one. I'm gonna to try to repeat that seaweed right up here on the top of my hill. I'm drawing very skinny, pointy seaweed that's all connected at the same spot on the bottom. And some of them are much longer than others. It makes it look like it's flowing. This is another plant I'd like to include in my picture. So I'm gonna go down here and make a little hill and then try to draw that same shape with something like this. But there was some overlapping, so there were pieces behind, farther away. I'll add those now. There, good enough. Notice the brightly colored sea plants. I'm gonna to try to repeat some of those over here. Little openings at the top. A little cluster like that. And maybe something different over here. When I color this in, I can make them very brightly colored. There's all sorts of different coral and sea plants at the bottom of the ocean floor. And they can be quite colorful. There's a little rock, a tall rock I'll put with some bumpy texture on it. I remember that picture also had some distant fish far away. In the distance, without much detail, there were little shapes of fish swimming through the water. I'll add some of those to my picture. It's good to get ideas from other pictures as long as we don't copy them exactly. This is going to be a distant sea turtle, looking small because it's far away and not much detail. What else can I add? Maybe a larger fish in front of the hill with a fin. And how about an eel? I love to draw eels. They're sort of like snakes with fins on their backs. There's the fin. Add some lines to it. Let's get creative. Maybe I can make an opening in one of my land structures where the uh, eels can swim through the hole. Here's the tail, and then it disappears behind the land, and possibly will pop out the other side up at the top here. There we go. Huh, this is fun. I can't wait to see what you add to your picture. This is a great stopping point for today. We've drawn everything in. If you want to add some extra critters to your scene, you can stop on this page and Choose some of these things to add to your background. Let's come back next week and do the outlining and the coloring. Welcome back to part two. I'm going to start off here by using a black marker as thin as I can find to outline all the pencil lines that I made in my first drawing. When I start filling in these little textures, I'm afraid that my marker is a bit thick and it might ruin the design. So I think I'll outline a few of my circles in black and then I'm gonna come back later with a green marker and outline a few of them in green. That way my flippers won't turn all black. You might wanna try that too. I think I will speed things up here and start outlining things in a fast speed. I'm really drawing at a normal speed, but I'm speeding up my video so you don't have to wait and watch me outline an entire picture. That could be pretty boring. And even outline the motion lines in the water. I think I'll start off using some of my markers. If you have markers at home, you might wanna try this. I'm gonna fill in green for my seaweed, but I'm going to leave little spe specks of white, little areas of white, and I'm gonna come back with a yellow marker and fill in those little white areas and even let my yellow go on top of my green. It's a little more interesting than just filling it all in with one color. Pick any two colors you like and see if you can use two colors of marker to fill in your seaweed. I'll come down here and fill this yellow first, but then I'm gonna get a brown marker and try to put textured dots all over it so it looks like it has a holy, bumpy, grainy texture. 
just like that. Use whatever colors you like for coloring in your coral and your sea plants. But just remember, you're going to be using a color for the land. So whatever color you plan on using for your sand or your ground, you're not gonna to wanna to use that color for your plants, or they won't show up. You need to have contrast or differences. I'm gonna come and take a yellow marker now and fill in all the little white spots like I did on the seaweed. If you want something to be gray and you don't have a gray marker, you can just use a pencil. A regular pencil rubbed in solidly like this will make it turn gray. Remember when I said I would come back later and go over some of those textured circles with green marker? Well, that's what I'm doing now. I didn't want my flipper to turn all black, so I thought I would outline in green and I'd outline in black so it wouldn't look completely green. Now I'm just going over it with a lighter green crayon. I think I'll be more colorful in my shell though. I liked those pictures I saw earlier where the turtles were very colorful. So use your favorite colors. I'm gonna color in my three grounds with three different things. One will be brown marker, one will be brown crayon, and one will be orange crayon. So they all have a slightly different look. Now for the background, I'm gonna use watercolor paints. If you don't have any paints, feel free to use crayons, markers, or whatever you do have. I'm gonna start by wetting the colors I plan on using. Blue, green, and would you believe that's purple right there? It looks like black, but Purple's always next to blue. Once they're wet, I'm gonna take the colored water and spread it onto my paper. I think I'll do these lines first. And then I'm gonna fill the entire background up with blues and greens and purples. Add plenty of water because if you don't, it'll get super dark and it might ruin the picture. I don't want the water to take away from my drawing. I want it to add to my drawing. So I keep mixing and blending water with green, blue, and purple. It's making a teal, or an aqua color. And just take your time and fill in the entire background area, all the way to the edge of the paper. I have a placemat underneath mine, so I won't get any paint on my table. I'm sure your parents would appreciate it if you would put something under your papers too, even when you're using markers and crayons. Well, this has been a lot of fun painting with you today and drawing and coloring. I can't wait to see how yours turn out. When you're done filling yours in with the colors, I'd love you to take a picture of it and send it to me on Teams. I'm really enjoying seeing all of your hard work. There, I'm going to let mine dry now. Have fun!